There's nothing like opening the box of a new MacBook, opening the lid on your MacBook, taking off the paper, and hearing that satisfying. The first thing you want to do is rush through the setup process, and if you're anything like me, you're so excited to have a new MacBook, you get straight to work and end up with this. My MacBook is a mess. I'm completely ashamed to even show y'all this. There are files everywhere on the desktop, no customization, my MacBook has zero personality. That all ends today. I'm going to take my MacBook from this to this, which not only looks better, but it's also more functional and it's already boosted my productivity. Let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is update my MacBook because I haven't checked for an update in a while and I want to make sure that I'm running the latest software updates. Now clean up this desktop. I'm going to delete everything that I don't need anymore and create folders for everything I want to keep. One of the easiest things to do with your laptop is to save to the desktop, but that's not productive, organized, or rational. Be better than me. If you don't start saving to your desktop, you won't end up with this mess. I'm going to take this cleanup a step further and get my finder together. I'm going to go to finder, settings, and the sidebar. Then I'm removing everything I don't need that's on my sidebar. For example, I'm going to take away the movies, music, pictures, tags, and airdrop. I'm also going to go to view and turn on show path bar. This is a feature I use a lot with my Windows work computer to help me navigate through my folders when I'm in subfolders and documents. Let's customize this finder toolbar. Just right click and select customize toolbar. I'm going to remove the tags and group and add airdrop to the toolbar. I removed airdrop from the sidebar and added it here for convenience. Having it beside the share option just makes more sense to me. And I realized while editing this video that I had removed the search option and I added it back. All you have to do is drag and drop anything you want to add to the toolbar. You can also edit the share button and remove any options that you don't use for sharing. For me, I'm going to take off contact suggestions, add to reading list. I'm going to remove the notes option, the send to the news. I don't even know why that's there. Reminders. And I think that's it. Now I'm going back to finder settings. I'm going to select advanced and under perform a search i want to select the current folder now when i search it won't be the whole macbook getting searched it'll just be the specific folder that i'm in right now. now the recents folder is not truly a recents folder it's a record of everything that you've opened since you've owned your mac if you haven't customized it i'm going to create a new recents folder by going to file and new smart folder in this new pop-up window i'm going to keep the search option on this mac and select the plus sign to the right in the first drop down, I'm going to select set the last date to open and then the date to seven days. I'm going to exclude apps from this folder by selecting the option key. This changes the plus sign to three dots. Here I'm going to select none of the following are true. Then kind is applications. Once I select save, now I have a true recents folder. I'm going to save this folder as recents and select to add it to the sidebar. Then I'm going to remove the old recents folder from the sidebar. Another setting that I want to change is to stop the external drives from popping up and showing on my desktop when I add them. So I'm going to go to Finder and then Settings. And under the General tab, I'm going to uncheck everything that's under Show on Desktop to keep the external drives from popping up. To keep the old Recents folder from popping up every time I open Finder, I'm going to change the default folder to Documents. That's it for all the settings that I'm going to change in Finder. Now let's do something with this desktop. I'm going to change out this black wallpaper for more of a custom look. So I'm going to go to Canva and create a wallpaper. In Canva, I'm going to use the create a design option. And here I'm just going to search for desktop and use the settings that they already have for desktop wallpaper in Canva. The best part about creating your wallpaper in Canva is it gives you wallpaper templates that you can choose like from. Like this template, the daily reminder, good things are coming, but I'm not a pink girl by any means means. What I'm going to do is create a black background for my wallpaper. I'm going to copy the wording and then I'm going to move it down to the black background. That's the thing that I like about using these wallpaper templates in Canva. If you find a wallpaper that you like but you want to make changes to it, you still have the option to customize it. So I'm going to bring the letters down and I'm going to change them out for this green color. Now I'm going to go back and delete the first page. It just makes it easier when you're getting ready to export it. So you won't have to choose which page you want to export. I export this as a PNG and I'm going to save it to my files.
So we're done with Canva. I'm gonna close out of this and go to the settings. And this is where you're gonna add in your wallpaper. Under settings, go to wallpapers. And this is where you can find all the wallpapers that Apple gives you with your MacBook. And if you wanna add your own custom wallpaper, you're gonna to go to add photos and then select your file and then go to where you saved your wallpaper and that's how you can upload it into the wallpaper section. Now that I have my wallpaper, I'm gonna to go to the app store and I'm gonna download an app called Widget Wall. With Widget Wall, I'll be able to add in the different widgets that I wanna use on my desktop. Of course, you already have the option to add in the widgets that Apple allows you to add in. But with Widget Wall, it kind of works like Widget Smith on your iPad. You get to go in and add in pictures to your desktop and use different widgets than what Apple provides. Like Widget Smith, there are some widgets that you can use that are free and then some you have to pay for. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my account to the premium so I have access to all the widgets. While I'm in the widget wall settings, I'm going to go to appearance and change the accent color to match the green that I used on my wallpaper. And to do that, I'm going to go back into Canva and copy the hex code for the green and paste it in here. That way, all of the widgets that I add with widget wall will match the background that I already have on my wallpaper. I'm gonna leave the base color as black because I want it to blend in with the wallpaper, the black background on my wallpaper too. Next thing I wanna do is move these two folders from on my desktop and I wanna add them to my documents folder so they're not visible on the desktop but I can still access them in my files. Now I'm gonna open my launch pad and then I'm gonna open the widget wall application. And when I open this application, you'll notice that even though I changed the background settings, it's still white. And the same way they look in this menu is the same way they'll appear on my desktop. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change the background to dark mode so everything will have a black background. I know that I wanna add a few quote stickers to my desktop, so I'm gonna go into the Pinterest website and I'm gonna search for quotes with a black background and I'm gonna download a few of the images to add to my wallpaper. going to open the launch pad and open the widget wall app and start adding the widgets to my desktop. So here is a quick glance of all the widgets that are available with the premium option. You have widgets for the weather, you can see the stats on your computer, you can do the calendar and music. The first one I'm going to start with is for the calendar and I'm going to use the calendar in large size. Under the calendar I'm going to add the music app and I'm going to switch it from Apple Music to Spotify. I'm going to go back up and grab one of the photo widgets and these photo widgets are available in several different sizes. I'm going to show you the different photo widgets. So you have the large and then you have this slim size and then the extra large and then the small and a medium. I'm going to use the large and I'm going to switch this cat picture out for one of the quote pictures that I downloaded from Pinterest. And to do that, you're going to click on the three dots above the picture change source to file and then import and then you're going to go to wherever you save your photos that you want to add to your desktop and then just open it and it'll replace that cat picture next widget i'm going to add is the clock and i'm going to make some adjustments to this widget now the bottom line of this one doesn't show because it's black and i want to change the color on that so i need to go down and change the base color i need to make that the same green as the accent color to do that i'm going to select the base color and then global here i'm going to copy the accent color hex code and then i'm going to paste it in on the widgets base color clock widget is going to be my first widget on the right side. Under the clock widget, I want to add another one of the quotes. So I'm going to go in and get a medium size photo widget and replace the cat on this widget with one of the quotes that I downloaded from Pinterest. If you're a cat person, this is the perfect app for you because all of these picture widgets come with different cat pictures that you can already use on your desktop setup.
The next widget I'm gonna add is gonna be a sticky note widget and I'm gonna use the sticky note in size large. This widget is a functional sticky note, so you can use it to take notes on, you can use it to track your to-do list for the day. I'm actually gonna create a task list with mine, but I'll show you that in a little while. To help with my productivity, I'm gonna add in a timer widget so I can do work sprints while using my laptop. And I have one more quote widget that I wanna add to the bottom right. For the sticky note widget, if you click on it, it gives you the option to start typing. Now the first line is gonna be your header. I'm gonna add in task list. And then at the bottom, if you select the list icon in the middle, it gives you a dotted list that you can use to write down all your tasks. And then when they're complete, you can check them off using the circles. There are any of the Apple widgets that you wanna use on your desktop, you can make those match your background too. I'm gonna add in a widget for Notion and show you how to do it. So what you wanna do is right click on your desktop and select edit widget. Then find the widget that you wanna to add to your desktop. Once you have your widget in place, we're going to settings. Under system settings, we're gonna to go to display and dock and then scroll down to the widget area. Here you wanna change the background color to monochrome. This will remove the color from the widget and make it so it matches your background. Now I wanna go in and add the flip clock as my screensaver. So what you do is go to the website for flip clock. You're gonna use the Mac option for the download. Once it's downloaded, select the download icon in your toolbar. And when you open that, you're gonna select the top saver option and it's gonna pop up in your settings and you're gonna select install. Once you select install, it's gonna take you to your screensaver. And if you scroll to the bottom under other and go all the way to the right, you'll see the flip clock. Now I'm gonna go down and clean up my dock. I'm gonna speed this part up. What I'm doing here is removing all of the apps that I don't really use a lot on my dock and adding the apps in that I frequently use. I'm going into settings and desktop and dock and I'm gonna change the magnification. I want my apps to wave in the dock when I go across them. So I'm gonna use this setting to adjust the amount of the wave. I don't want a big wave, just a small one. I'm also gonna turn on the setting for the apps to minimize back to the icon and I wanna turn off the suggested apps in my dock. Another change I made was going to the control center and turning on the percentage for my battery so I could monitor my battery life. Going back to the desktop and docs, I'm gonna set up the hot corners on my desktop. So I'm gonna leave the quick notes in the bottom right corner. The top right, I'm gonna make that for my launch pad. The bottom left, I'm gonna use that to lock the screen. And the top left, I'm gonna set to start my screensaver. So I'm done with all the settings and I'm gonna come out of this screen and I'm gonna test out the hot corners to make sure everything works like it's supposed to. When I go to the bottom right, it'll pop up my quick notes box. Move the launch pad from my dock because I set it up for my launch pad to be able to open when I go to the top right. I can activate my flip clock screensaver when I go to the top left and lock my desktop fast by going to the bottom left. There's one last setting that I wanna change on my MacBook. So I'm going back to settings and I'm gonna to go to touch ID and passcode. Here I'm gonna to toggle on the option for my Apple Watch to unlock my MacBook. So that means whenever I'm close to my MacBook with my Apple Watch on, I don't have to touch or put in my passcode. It'll recognize my watch and unlock my computer. My MacBook looks a lot better now. Not only have I given it some personality, but I've also made it more functional and easier to navigate. Let me know in the comments if you have any more setup suggestions. All right, y'all, till next time.